But the United States didn't accept that. And so nowadays, instead of having just the CIA going around behind the scenes and trying to manipulate the process secretly by inserting money here and instructions there and so forth, they have now a sidekick which is this National Endowment for Democracy, oh, yeah. NED. Yeah. And uh, this organization dates from 1967. A lot of people don't realize because it was just established in, the, I think, 83 uh, or so. But the idea uh, emerged from a series of scandalous revelations in 1967, the worst ones to that point, to hit the CIA. And I was um, in headquarters at the time that these uh, scandals broke and the gloom there was something you could, you could touch almost. Because what happened was uh, the, the long-running CIA's control and manipulation of the international program of the National Students Association in this country, which was the National Organization of University Students, uh, came out. It was revealed. Uh, and that led to revelations of a lot of other CIA operations because they were using the same bogus and real foundations to channel money into all these different or overseas organizations. And I remember very well that Time Magazine at the time, or Newsweek, I think it was Time, uh, they published a wheel uh, oh, yeah. with all mm -hmm. these spokes going out. And the CIA was at the center, and then halfway out were all these, these, corpora uh, these um, foundations. Uh, American organizations, and then out at the end were the uh, foreign groups that got the money and the instructions, naturally. They don't give, give away money without being sure that it's spent the way they want it spent. And so um, uh, this was a catastrophe for the CIA. And the next month or the month after that, this started in February of 67, and then by April, I think it was, Dante Fashel, the congressman from Florida, was proposing the establishment of a, an open system to finance these overseas organizations. And we're talking about uh, some government organizations abroad, some political parties, uh, some media uh, organizations, uh, youth organizations and student organizations, all these kinds of, of so-called pluralist organizations, when in fact they weren't really free organizations for, because to the degree that they take money and instructions from the CIA, to that degree they're not free at all, right? But anyway, Fashel came up with this idea, but nothing, it didn't go anywhere because the so-called consensus between the two parties had broken down over Vietnam. And so it wasn't until the early 80s when Reagan made his speech in the House of Commons about the democracy project worldwide that this began to take on steam again. And uh, finally, they decided to copy the German example. Uh, each of the major German political parties has a foundation which is financed by the German government. Uh, before it was West Germany, now the whole country. And, um, uh, for example, the uh, Friedrich Ebert Stiftung is the um, SPD, or the Social Democratic Party's um, um, foundation. And they finance projects all over the place. And for years in the 50s and 60s, and I would guess even into the 70s, in fact, I know into the 70s, e even to the uh, early 80s, the CIA was channeling money through these German foundations abroad. For example, some money, uh, a lot of money, I think it was a million dollars or more, uh, but I'm, I'm a little hazy on the amount. But anyway, it went through the, it was CIA money who, which went through the Konrad Adenauer Stiftung. That's the Christian Democratic Union. It went from there to Evepo, which is um, a foundation of the um, COPE, the Christian Democrats in Venezuela. Oh. And from there, it went to the Christian Democrats in El Salvador, to Duarte, for use in the elections. I've forgotten which year, maybe 84 or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, it was traced. Some journalists did this. And um, so that is the way they would use these German foundations in the past. So now we've got our own. We don't have to use the Germans unless we really want to anymore. Because in 1984, uh, we established this National Endowment for Democracy, which is nothing but a mega conduit. And the millions or the tens of millions that uh, are set aside for the meddling in the internal affairs of other countries goes to this conduit. It's like a bank account or something, but they have a board of directors and they uh, do reports and stuff like that. <laughs> but then it goes from there to one of four uh, private foundations. Uh, one of the Democratic Party, one the Republican Party, or two, three the AFL-CIO, and four the U.S. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. These groups then uh, pass it out to recipients uh, in foreign countries. And in the Nicaraguan elections of 1990, I believe the figure was something like 12.5 million that went from the National Endowment for Democracy through these conduits to the UNO political movement there. 
uh, it was the party, the coalition, you know, of UNO, which is the most ungodly coalition uh, <laughs> yeah. you can ever imagine. Everything from communists all the way That's to right. Samosistas. That's right. And uh, then they had a trade front, trade union front, mm -hmm. uh, which also received money. And then they had this civic association. Civic association, I think they call it Via Civica there. Um, that's, a, that's an old, old uh, technique of the CIA is to establish a, a, a type of civic organization which will be involved in monitoring elections and things like that. And the first one that I know of was Namfrel in um, the Philippines. They established that one around 1950-51 as part of the counterinsurgency against the Hucks, uh, the, um, the uh, guerrilla movement of the time, because we wanted to have a vehicle for electing our man president of the Philippines. And we did it through this organization, NANFRO. NANFRO stands for National Association for Free Elections, I think. <laughs> free. And, uh, yeah, free elections, when we were financing the thing. <laughs> and um, NANFRO was very successful. And uh, our man, uh, Ramon Magsaysay, was elected president. I think it was 70, 52, 53. And unfortunately, he was killed in a plane crash, 57. And so then we switched to Marcos and various other uh, people like that. But NANFRO never, never uh, faded away. And in 1986, remember the elections of 1986, which Marcos tried to steal? Well, Namfro was alive and well. And they were the ones who denounced the fraud by Marcos. And they then inspired the movement of people power, which forced him to resign and brought Cory Aquino in as president. So Namfro was alive and well. They tried to copy it in Panama. They sent the president of the Chamber of Commerce in the early 80s, um, or 84 or there, more or less, in preparation for the 87 elections, I think it was. They sent him out to Panama to study the way NAMFRO worked. So he could come back to Panama and establish another one there. And so he did. In Panama, it was called Cruzada Civica, or Civic Crusade. And um, this was what was used against the Noriega forces in the streets. It became a what they call Rabi Blanca there, um, you know, the, the upper-class white people in Panama. It was one of those organizations. But they did take to the streets, and um, you can remember the, the, uh, the pictures on the covers of the magazines, you know, when they had the riots, and, um, and Noriega was not overthrown then. But they tried everything in Panama. The CIA was running candidates of its own uh, all through the 1980s, trying to get Noriega out. Maybe not all through the 80s. No, they, his, his utility ended about 86, 87. Because he was working with the CIA. Yes, and doing yes. It was important for the Contra operation, operation in, um, in Nicaragua. But by 87, everybody knew that the Contras were not going to do anything. They weren't going anywhere militarily. And uh, Noriega's importance was in allowing Panama to be used for training them and also for resupply. But that was over by 87. And that's when the efforts began to, to get him a aside, leading to the invasion in 89. But uh, they were uh, up to here in Panamanian politics, and I'm sure they are, using these different types of organizations. So the covert action operations go on. And as a matter of fact, in, um, not only in, Bolivia, uh, in uh, Bulgaria did they overturn this government. I didn't even finish that story, but what happened is all this money from National Endowment for Democracy went in, and they fomented student strikes and demonstrations, trade union strikes, uh, massive street protests and uh, not only was the money put in by the National Endowment for Democracy but also pa Paul Weyrich's um, Free Congress Foundation all got involved and this is part of the Christian right you know he's right. the man who runs all these different organizations out of the same address in Washington DC and uh, this Free Congress Foundation also got going in there uh, in, I guess in coordination with what the CIA was doing what NED was do doing and, and so forth and so the elections were in June. Uh, the communists had, or the former communists had won. By the end of November, they were out because they made the country ungovernable. 1991, they did the same thing in Albania. They had elections there. Free, fair, no fraud. Former communists won. The United States got in there through these different organizations and the CIA, naturally. And they made Albania ungovernable. Chile, same thing. Same, Chile, same thing. Brazil in the early 60s, mm -hmm. same thing. We, did, I did this, we were doing the same thing when I was in Ecuador. In fact, we had two coups, uh, two um, unconstitutional changes of government when I was there, and they were largely due to what we were doing. And by the time I left, uh, after three years, we had what we wanted, a four-man military dictatorship that was carrying on a very strong repression against the left.